I got to preach on this wild story this week in Second Kings chapter 3. So it's about this king, Jehoram, who's king in northern Israel. He uh, has to face a rebellion. So the Moabites under King Misha actually rebelled. There's actually a, a historical note about this. There, they, there's a tablet by this king that uh, they've discovered, and you can actually go see it in the Louvre still today. But anyways, Jehoram, he has this problem. So he calls his friend Jehoshaphat in the kingdom of Judah and Edom, and they, they go down and they start marching around the bottom of the Dead Sea in order to attack Moab and get back their kingdom. And so as they're marching this circuitous route around the bottom of the Dead Sea, they run out of water. Now at this point, uh, King Jehoram, he kind of lamely complains like, like, well, the Lord has led us out here to deliver us into the hand of the Moabites. Uh, how often do people blame God when things go wrong, when they've never saw God, they don't see God at all in this entire story. Anyways, so as they, he is complaining, Jehoshaphat, king of Judah, and they're more faithful than Israel. He, he says, is there a prophet of the Lord here? And uh, someone says, hey, Elisha is here. And so they call Elisha. Elisha comes in and he's like, you know, were it not for Jehoshaphat, I wouldn't even look at you. Go to the prophets of your father and mother. That is the, the prophets of Baal. But anyways, right here, God, even though Jehoram isn't that great of a guy, God is gracious. Uh, a really funny moment here because he says, call for a musician. It's, it's one of those moments, you know, we all kind of know music is a little bit magic, but this is the one point in the Bible where you could see there's actual magic to it. Because as the music plays, the hand of the Lord comes upon him and he prophesies. He says, thus says the Lord, though you'll see no cloud or rain, that you the, the rivers will be full of water and you'll be able to drink. And even more than that, I will give the Moabites into your hand. And so the... Next morning, the Moabites, they wake up and they look at the water and they see it. And as they look at it, it looks, because the sun is low, it looks red. And they said, the kings have fought against each other and they rush out foolishly, utterly defeated. Now they're defeated through every one of their cities, as God promised, until they come to their last city. The king, Mish Misa, he takes 700 swordsmen and tries to break through the line, but fails. And as a last ditch effort, he sacrifices his own son on the wall. And it says that great wrath came against Israel. Now, uh, the most straightforward way I think to read this is this is demonic wrath. And, and, and don't, don't think of it as like uh, a demon defeated the power of the Lord here, because we remember the great wrath came against Israel. And Israel here is the northern kingdom, which is apostate. They're worshiping Baal. And so God here gives them into the hand of the kind of powers that they have been consorting with.